What is up guys? Lip Smack is here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be taking a look at the weapons available in the Pyramid Umbral Engram Loot Pool, diving into their stats, their perks, as well as their PvE and PvP god rolls so you guys know what to farm for. This is basically four videos in one. Now we are going to be excluding the Pulse Rifle and the Thick Sword because those are a part of the Seasons Pass, they're kind of their own thing and will be covered later. The vast majority of people are going to be getting the four original weapons we're going to be talking about so let's get started first things first we have the false promises legendary kinetic auto rifle now taking a look at the stats here this belongs to the actually pretty rare highest damaging but slowest shooting 360 rounds per minute archetype now in terms of stats they're pretty average for this archetype the stat that does stand out is actually reload speed it's one of the best in its archetype moving on from there let's take a look at its perks and we're gonna have some new perks present we're gonna take a little bit longer to discuss them in this role and then when we get to the other weapons we're gonna breeze by them so in terms of the uh, barrels and brakes and stuff you're really looking for something that increases stability because this weapon has a great base range but not so great base stability in the second perk slot honestly ricochet rounds really stands out slightly increasing range but also increasing stability you could go with high caliber rounds for a more pvp oriented role to flinch your opponent more but in that first perk category we have just a lot of actually good options well we have overflow picking up special or heavy ammo reloads this weapon to beyond normal capacity you basically get double ammunition so instead of 32 rounds in the magazine you simply pick up special ammo and you have 60 rounds in a magazine that for pve is actually quite powerful we then have killing wind a brand new perk final blows grant increased mobility weapon range and handling for a short duration because you already have pretty darn good range and this isn't a weapon that necessarily thrives on having a little bit more range i don't think killing wind is necessarily as good here as it would be on you know a shotgun for example moving on from there dynamic sway reduction this is meant for auto rifles this perk is going to make this weapon a lot more stable lets you hit your shots from even much further ranges than normal then Feeding Frenzy, just increasing your reload and more so after more rapid kills, great perk. Then Subsistence, underrated but I feel another great perk allowing you to get kills and consistently be reloading your magazine at the cost of some reserve ammunition. But if you put on a couple of you no know, auto rifle finders, you won't find that's ever an issue. Honestly, a lot of great choices there. In the second perk slot, we have another brand new perk, Symptomatic Arsenal. Reloading after a final blow also reloads stowed weapons. So you could pair this with especially Feeding Frenzy to give you faster reload and really make the most of that. Have some incredibly slow reloading uh, special and heavy weapons and use this thing to kind of cheat their reloads. But if you're not interested in that, and I think for the most part you wouldn't be, I foresee it being more useful in a boss fight scenario where you're basically giving auto-loading holster to your other weapons, eh, I think this is pretty niche, honestly. Surrounded giving a damage bonus is not bad, but this isn't the weapon that really gets, you know, in the nitty-gritty of close-range combat. Swashbuckler, on the other hand, is a great perk, just increasing your damage for kills, get a melee kill, and it goes to its max bonus. Then we've got another brand new perk, Unrelenting. Rapidly defeating targets triggers health regeneration. Guardians and more powerful combatants counts as more than one kill. So this, I think, is actually a pretty good perk. Being able to get essentially a red death or a crimson style of effect on a normal legendary weapon, like being able to heal is very, very useful. Combining that with something uh, like, well, any of the good perks in the first slot is gonna let you just easily get some rapid kills against red bars and start that health regen. The other perk I'm looking at here is Rampage. Kills with this weapon temporarily grant increased damage stacks up to three times. You know what that goes really well with? Overflow. Rampage plus Overflow, put on a Rampage spec, and this thing is putting out way more damage than it's supposed to. 
So, as for the god rolls, in PvP, I'm really looking for something like ricochet rounds or high cal combined with dynamic sway reduction, importantly, and then swashbuckler, rampage, or even unrelenting. Now, for a PvE roll, you have a lot more versatility. Overflow Rampage is going to be fantastic. Subsistence plus Rampage or Swashbuckler or Unrelenting is going to be great. And even Feeding Frenzy combined with Rampage, Swashbuckler or Unrelenting is also going to be good. Alright, moving on from there, let's talk about the Whispering Slab, a legendary kinetic combat bow. Taking a look at the stats, it belongs to the Lightweight Frame archetype. Stats are pretty average for this archetype. Now, looking at the perks here, we've got a lot of decent and interesting choices. So you can go with elastic bowstring or flexible string to increase the charge time, or I should say reduce the charge time, improve it. Then the shaft doesn't matter as much. Looking at the first perk slot, you could go with quick drop for a very snappy weapon Archer's Tempo to increase the draw time after every precision hit is a great PvE choice. And Killing Wind, although you don't need the range, the extra mobility and handling, especially since it's so easy to grab a kill with simply one or two shots, isn't bad either. Moving on to the second perk slot, interestingly, Vorpal Weapon is here, which makes it do more damage against, well, Majors, Bosses, Guardians uh, with their super and vehicles. So that could be a decent choice, especially for PvP. Then we've got Demolitionist, where kills will grant more grenade energy. Definitely not bad there. Throwing a grenade will also reload your weapon, but with a bow, that's not that great. Unrelenting is here as well and pretty decent, and so is Swashbuckler. So I think the PvP god roll is going to be Quick Draw or Killing Wind combined with mainly Vorpal to deal with supers a lot easier. On the point of the stag, it becomes a two-shot kill with Vorpal against supers. But you could also go with Demolitionist, Unrelenting, or Swashbuckler for just other bonuses. Now as for a PvE god roll, honestly you're just replacing Quick Draw with Archer's Tempo and then going for any of those other second tier perks I already mentioned. Okay, it's time to move on from there to the Hollow Words Legendary Energy Fusion Rifle. Taking a look at the stats, this belongs to the Precision Frame Archetype, so not quite the High Impact Archetype, one step down. And honestly, the Hollow Words does not have great stats. For example, the main ingredient in the same archetype beats it in literally every single stat except for aim assist, so just keep that in mind. But moving on to the perks, we have some really interesting choices. You could go with something like Liquid Coils to increase the damage, but in that first perk category, we do have Feeding Frenzy, gonna be pretty decent. We also have Lead from Gold, which is something I like. It lets you get ammo for picking up heavy, so if you are loading your armor with extra heavy ammo finders and heavy ammo scavengers for machine guns, whatever you're doing, which can be quite helpful, you can also keep reserves up for your special. We do have Quick Jaw, which is not bad, especially in PvP, and then we also do have Killing Wind, and this is going to be where Killing Wind is at its most effective because a fusion rifle can really make use of that extra range. And almost forgot, we do have Under Pressure, improved accuracy and stability when the magazine gets lower. Guess what? In PvP, when you only have like two rounds in a magazine, Under Pressure is actually going to matter quite a bit. Then in that second perk slot, we do have Vorpal Weapon again. Surrounded is not terrible on fusions in PvE, you are a little bit closer range. Then we do have Unrelenting, not bad as well. And then lastly, Backup Plan, where if you switch to this weapon, immediately it's going to have a pretty fast charge time. So, for a PvE god roll, in my opinion, I think you're going for maybe Feeding Frenzy, but most likely led from Gold or Killing Wind, combining that with Vorpal Weapon for just more damage all around, Unrelenting as kind of an easy way to get rapid kills, like one shot can kill you know, multiple red bars and then trigger Unrelenting right away. Now as for a PvP god roll, I do think going for Killing Wind, just because it's the unique factor of this weapon, is a good idea. Combining that with potentially backup plan to get that first really easy quick kill, 
or potentially vorp a weapon to shut down supers much easier. But it is time to move on from there to a weapon that's making waves right now, the Temptation's Hook, Legendary Power Sword. Now, taking a look at its stats, you can't really tell much, but importantly, this belongs to the brand new caster frame. And this means that when you do your heavy attack, it won't do a traditional uppercut. Instead, it's going to launch a projectile at the target. If you have full sword energy, it will do a lot of damage. If you don't, it will still launch a projectile, but it won't do anywhere near as much damage. So, let's take a look at its perks. Generally, you are going for like Jagged Edge for just absolutely maximum damage. That is going to lower your ammo capacity, so you could kind of split the difference by going uh, with something like Tempered Edge, which increases damage, but not by as much. Then we've got all the guards, as usual. In terms of the first perk slot, we do have two really interesting choices. We have Tireless Blade, sword ammo granted for every other powered sword kill, and then we also have Relentless Strikes. Landing three light attack hits within a short time grants sword ammo. Then, in the second perk slot, Surrounded is much easier to activate with a sword. I've been kind of, you know, lukewarm on it on the other rolls, but here, Surrounded is great. We also have Vorpal Weapon. Swords are part of a lot of key damage phases against bosses. Vorpal giving 15% more damage will absolutely matter. We also have, importantly, Whirlwind Blade. Rapid Sword Strikes increase this weapon's damage for a short duration. Guarding also ends the effect. So, generally, you're going for Relentless Strikes plus Whirlwind's Blade. That is the god roll on a lot of different swords out there, and that is capable of, you know, one phasing Riven with six people with that combo. Generally, you don't actually need Relentless Strikes because the boss will be dead before it triggers, but it's just a great way to keep your ammo high as you're slaying out with your sword. So, that is obviously a great choice. You could instead go for Relentless Strikes plus Vorpal for more consistent damage against bosses. You won't have to start building up damage with Whirlwind's Blade. The downside, however, is that Whirlwind's Blade, when it's at times 5, is at much more damage than Vorpal. Now, with this sword, however, being a caster frame sword, if you want to go for a different kind of build, if you want to go for a sword roll that's built around using that heavy attack and shooting enemies from far away, then you really want to go for a tireless blade to grant sword ammo for powered sword kills and then combine that with Vorpal because, you know, Whirlwind Blade isn't going to necessarily be triggering that often. If you're using it like that, Vorpal will. So that's going to allow you to take down, you know, majors and bosses from way further away than a traditional sword would otherwise be able to. Now, all of that applies to the PvE god roll, where you're most commonly going to be using this weapon. But if you do want a PvP roll, you want energy transfer, where you get class ability energy for guarding because you aren't really able to make the most of the extra ammo from Relentless Strikes or Tireless Blade, your enemies die too quickly, and then combining that with could be Vorpal to shut down supers a lot easier. But honestly, you're gonna want on guard. Quick attacks immediately after swapping to this sword do additional damage. So that's the PvP roll, you can just whip it out, and then as soon as you do get a couple of attacks in, they do more damage than normal. Alright guys, so there you have it. That's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.